You've just closed on your home. Congratulations. But now you don't want to mess anything up. I'm Angie Blanco, a realtor here in Miami, Florida with One Path Realty. And today I want to help you sort out your life after buying a property by letting you know what not to do after closing. I'm going to give you five things to be aware of, and I might throw in a bonus at the end. So stick around to see if I do. Let's get into these five no-nos. Number one, keeping all your locks the same. No matter where you live, you don't know how many duplicates of those keys were given out and to who and why and so on. So what I'm thinking is let's just play it safe and change them. You can either change the lock entirely or you can just rekey the locks that are already there. And if they're not your taste or style anyway, this could be one other thing that you personalize to make your new house more you. Locks are also a really beautiful finishing touch on a door. So apart from the safety feature that they provide, they're also really nice to look at. I know I always notice them when I walk up to a property, but maybe that's just me. But in any case, do not keep your locks the same after closing. They're usually not too expensive either. And again, safety. Number two, moving all your furniture in before painting and cleaning. This might sound like common sense, but you'd be surprised. With all the excitement of cleaning, closing and finally having your own home, anyone can get a little blindsided, especially if you've never been through this before. What comes first? What can wait? Like what is the chronological order of life after closing on a house? It can all seem to blend together at some points. Where we live, we had popcorn ceilings and I cannot imagine scraping all of that wet sticky popcorn all over our furniture. Whether it was covered with plastic tarps or not, what a mess. And also just the ease of getting around. If your place is already full of stuff, then you're gonna have a much harder time reaching things and getting into those nooks and crannies. Now I know some people are limited with time, they have to move in a rush or they're renting and they have to be out by a certain day. And if that's the case, then you gotta do what you gotta do. But ideally, any painting and cleaning that you wanna get done, you want little to no furniture in the property just to make your life a little easier. Number three, not applying for homestead exemption. Homestead exemption is a benefit for owners who live in their property, meaning this is not an investment property. It reduces the taxable value of your home by up to $50,000. This means that if you were paying a property taxes on a house valued at $300,000, then after getting homestead exemption, you'd be paying property taxes on a house valued at only $250,000. This doesn't mean that the value of your home goes down. It just means that the amount of property taxes you'll be paying will be less. Is that okay, Is that okay with you? With you? If you bought a house in 2021 or earlier and haven't applied, please apply for it. You won't be able to get it for this year because the deadline was March 1st to apply, but you can get it for next year. And if you live in Florida, I've added the link to apply in the description of this video. So go ahead and do that. It only takes a couple of minutes. Number four, not meeting your neighbors. Come on guys. I know we're all hearing about the metaverse and virtual reality, but we still have this physical reality. We are still physical people, social beings, and interactive beings, and a smile still brightens our day, admit it. And I'm not talking about door knocking your entire neighborhood with home-baked cookies, but you're probably gonna be coming in and out of your property quite a bit, working on it, moving stuff in, taking stuff out, and you're bound to bump into your neighbors. Introduce yourself, make it short and sweet, let them know you're moving in and if they need anything, you're right next door. They'll most likely reciprocate with the same level of generosity and everyone appreciates a nice neighbor and a little bit of human interaction. It's a breath of fresh air and at this point, a pretty nice surprise. Number five, keeping the address on your driver's license the same. Some people move and either forget to change their address because they're already so bombarded with all the other things they have to get done and it slips their mind. Others don't really think it's that important important and then some people honestly just don't know. But if you're in Florida, you have 30 days to change the address on your driver's license. You'll also need to get it done for your homestead exemption. Remember that one? Also, God forbid you got stopped with an inaccurate driver's license after that 30 day period, you could run the risk of having to pay fees or other types of penalties. And apart from changing it on your driver's license, you'll also wanna do it for other things like your insurances, vehicle registration, voter ID, all utility bills, credit cards, and so on. So keep that change of address as one of your top priorities after closing on a house because it is pretty important. And I guess I'll go ahead and give you that bonus that I told you about since you're still here. And it is do not 
fall for any scams. This probably should have been number one, but I figured I'd save the best for last. So after your closing, your deed is recorded as public record. So basically anyone with access to the internet can find your warranty deed. And so what some companies will do is gather a bunch of new homeowners information and mail them really legitimate looking letters requesting them to buy their warranty deed for $90. Now beware because you most likely have already paid for your warranty deed in your closing costs. And if you're not sure, take a quick look at your closing disclosure and look for something along the lines of recording fees deed. Mine was only 27 bucks. But now the reason some people fall for this is because one, you don't buy a house every day, so you're probably not aware. And two, you don't get your warranty deed right away. It's mailed to you a couple of weeks later after your closing because the recording takes some time. But now you know, so do not fall for those scammy letters. If you have any other questions regarding the closing process or the buying process if you're just starting out feel free to reach me my information is down in the description and if you haven't bought a house yet and you're wondering what all's involved in the process watch this video here where i break it all down for you every single step of the home buying process happy watching and i'll see you on the next one